So I want to start off by just um, welcoming Bonnie to the to the world of Masterius and say that she lives in um, Idaho, in the southwestern part of Idaho, correct? Right. And, What's the area? Yeah. And as I think some of my ancestors, ancestry actually came through Idaho to be uh, out west in Canada. So I, I don't really know how to say it, but I, I know there's some background there. So anyways, Bonnie is someone who is passionate about painting plein air, plein air and has gone to many events across to Western uh, the US. But when I read her whole background, it's she's been in art since she breathed, I think, as, as as somebody at five, she was already a competent artist. So, you know, I can't say I'm any, anywhere. And Leanne and I are just trying to catch up at this stage of life, aren't we, Leanne? It's like, oh. <laughs> and she loves uh, pastel. I think that's your passion, but you're, and you're also involved with oil. And she's chaired many committees and curated in many galleries. So I think the other thing that, you know, throwing this out to Leanne as well, we can pick, we can pick Bonnie's brain over time around lots of things you know, the mm. business side of this as well. So, you know, and uh, yeah, so that part's there. So Bonnie, um, we're going to show a couple of your paintings, but before we do that, is there anything else in your background that you want to put out there? Like it's a very short intro that I gave for you. Oh, you know, you know, I just, um, like you said, I decided at age five, I was going to be an artist. And, you know, even though that took second, second uh, string to another career, um, I, I decided that in 2000, nine actually i i broke away from corporate america and and started doing art full time and you know to and treated it like a treat it like a business and uh, but still enjoy what i do you know and not and not lose the passion and not um get caught up in just you know reproducing things just for the pur pur purpose of a sale but anyway that's that's kind of my history and and i do love plein air i think it's really really valuable um to any artist, whether you're a studio artist or you just have a passion for plein air, it it's so important to get out there and paint from from life. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay, Leanne, go right in there. Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie, do you mean to tell us that you didn't start seriously pursuing your art career until 2009? No, I, I no, I'm sorry. I, if I if I um, confused you that I, I painted, I, I've painted all along. It's always been something that I have done. So I've had gallery representation since really my first show was in my senior year of high school. Okay. Yeah. And so that's really a long time ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I was going to be super impressed if you were as accomplished as you are in such a short time, but um, I'm still impressed. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I didn't start doing plein air seriously until about 12 years ago. Okay. Okay. And, and well, I will tell you about my very first plein air experience, which is pretty, pretty funny. And, and I can do that now, Jean, if you would like to hear this. Let, yeah, let's do that. The, and then uh, yeah, so and we can see Ana has just joined us as well. Hi, so, Ana. So, Ana, this is Bonnie. Hi, Hi Bonnie. How are you? I'm good. And, how are you? Good and Bonnie, thing. Ana is our uh, lead coordinator, head honcho navigator person. Yeah, lead lead <laughs> navigator. I'll be able to stay for a bit of this, not all of it, but I was definitely wanted to hear you, Bonnie, about your plein air painting. Oh, great, great. I, I was just going to tell everybody about. Um, I, I said, I, I really started seriously doing plein air in, in about 12 years ago, but my first plein air experience was in, let's see, 1979, I believe. And my, my mom, who was an artist as well, said, I think we should go do some plein air. Now we, we lived in central, north central Montana, very, very, very rural. And the Missouri River breaks area was um, close by. And so there were a lot of, um, if you know anything about Montana and the rivers, the, the Fort Peck Lake dam dammed up the, the Missouri River. So of the homesteaders that, that initially were homesteading along the river, you know, it was quite fertile ground. So it was wonderful land. They they had they had to sell their land because obviously it would back the water would from the dam would back up and and flood that area, and but there were still some of those those homesteads that were um, 
there at that time. And so my mom said, let's, we, we need to go down and, and just record these, you know, some of these buildings that are, the, you know, they're historical buildings. And, and she had, she had been raised in that area. And so we go down there, it's the middle of August, and it's about 95 degrees. And it's, as you know, when you get close to water, things get humid. And it's pretty humid because there's a lot of, a lot of vegetation and so on. And so we go to this one old farmstead, and we get out of our vehicle, we don't have any kind of plein air equipment. We've got paints, we, we've got canvases, and we've got pallets, and that's about it. And so we're out there, and it's, you know, the weeds are, are high, you know, thigh high, and and the, the bugs are out there, and it's hot. We have no sun protection, and we're out there. And I said, you know, when we're out there, and, and I wish I still had that painting, because it was the worst, most awful thing that I'd ever done. <laughs> And it was, I mean, it was just, it was just pure mud. There was no values to it or anything. And I said to my mom, I said, this is the dumbest idea we've ever had. I said, we need to go. <laughs> and so from 1979 to the 2000s, I thought plein air is not for me. <laughs> but then I got the bug. Then I got the bug. Literally not the bugs, but the bug. I got it. <laughs> I, sh I should go back to that area and paint and paint that area again. But well, you actually should. I think that'd be a great idea. Probably underwater by now. But anyway, it was uh, it was an interesting uh, endeavor. Awesome. Well, before we get into because we have lots to cover, and and we touched base earlier on, and we're going to get through the whole detail around what Masteries is and how Bonnie's connected and what we're doing. And I haven't introduced myself. And so I'm Jean Parker and the people that are here, they know who I am, but for those that are coming, um, I am a navigator who's here to support Bonnie, who's with the master in this group, as well as the participants. And um, because it's a mentorship, we are always in a constant kind of communication and conversation to see that we're meeting the needs of the people participating and that the master is supported. So that's that's kind of the role that I have. And I've I have been so lucky to be involved with Masterius for the last two and a half years. And I would say that's probably when I made the shift from being the person who did these little summer workshops where somebody had the painting already to saying, oh, I think I'm going to do this. And so the last two and a half years, my journey has been phenomenal with all of these amazing masters and the people that I've met. So. That's that's me and that's my story and in, in, in involved with Masteries. So I'm just going to pop you because one of the things that we want to do for anybody who's coming in and you get to have this conversation with Bonnie, you say you want to learn a little bit more about this platform that she's on and what we're doing. Um, I'm going to show you just quickly how to get through that. So I'm just going to share my screen here. So that you can see. And so if you go well, yes, and so we've got little messages here that have popped up. That, here we go. I got to get this message. This was Leanne who couldn't get in before. And so you'll pop in and you'll see that this is um, Masterius. And I just want to show you one thing on here, but before I show you how to get to Bonnie, and that is um, if you're really trying to understand who we are, um, and we are artists, so we love visuals. So on the first page, there's these icons and a description of how we actually work. And I think this is a really simple way of understanding what Masterius is. And that is, is that we work in small groups. These are small mentorship groups. We have conversations, we share celebrations with each other, we get to know each other, and we get our questions answered. And so it's not a course. Masterius also offers courses. But for the mentorship side, it's small and it's personal. There's, there's a takeaway that you have every month and you go and you do homework. So you always take it and embed it into what you're learning. And the, like we said, these are monthly. On top of it, there are weekly events that you can listen to and participate in um, that give you all kinds of insights. I don't wanna to spend too much time here because I wanna to get to Bonnie. Um, the, the person that's talking, like I said, I'm your navigator. So I will be with the group from the point it starts um, Leanne, for example, who's sitting here with me, she she is someone who's been in this group with me for a while, and we're moving now through to this next mentor, which is, which is Bonnie. So I keep going on that journey, and we have a platform we're on, and I think we are now over 200 masters inside of uh, uh, um, 
Master is, which is phenomenal. And we can keep transitioning. So anyways, if you want to see more, come here. But in terms of just walking through so you can find your, your to find Bonnie, you go choose your mentor. And of course, I'm at the cottage, so nothing works fast here. And then I just put Bonnie's name in here. And it should just pop up. Those are the little churning. There's Bonnie. There she is. Oil and pastel, as it says. And it pops up. I just click on it. You know, but of course, nothing super fast in my world. So here it comes. Boom. So here's Bonnie. And like that little write-up, we were just talking about who she is, so if you want to see more. And I did ask Bonnie for some of her art, but actually, it sits right here. So I don't have to go to another place to find it again. I just have to get rid of this. Okay, so you can see, this is Bonnie uh, showing some of her work, um, pastel and oil, correct? Are they both here, Bonnie, or just the pastel? Yeah, those those ones, the, the first three on the left... Well, the two on the left and then the top one in the middle, those are oil and cold wax. Oh. And then the, the snow scene is, is just traditional oil. And then the the trees and the and the field with the cows are those are pastels. Awesome. Awesome. And so it would show the kind of expertise. And then it shows uh, the groups that um Bonnie is running and one is live right now. That's the emerging one we just talking about. That's going to be on the third Thursday of every month that Leanne and I participate in. And if you're interested in that, you can, but you can also ask questions inside of this website. And here's more about Bonnie as well. So we just wanted to show you a little bit about Mastrius, but we don't want this to be about all about that, but we don't want you to be here and going, what are they talking about? And you can't find your way to anything as well. So we are now back to, to Bonnie and I'm just going to, We'll screen ourselves. And so this is an informal session all about plein air. Bonnie and I got together the other day and we had a great conversation and um, I asked her a bunch of questions and she shared a bunch of things. So I, I we're just going to start informally, but if, if Bonnie's going, okay, well, I think I've shared it all. I'm just going to start asking those questions as well. So we'll turn it over to Bonnie now. You start to talk about, because the title of this one is really about what I have figured out about plein air. That's what uh, Bonnie is sharing with us. So we'll get you just to start and, and I'll jump in if you have any. And please, um, Anna and Leanne, any questions you have, just put your hand up and we will respond. There's four of us here, so it's not a big, you don't have to get formal. Okay, Bonnie. All right, well, you know, so what I figured out about plein air is that you, 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 you never, it's always a learning process. You, you've got, you know, you're gonna be learning all always because there's so many variables but i think i think some of the most important things that i have learned uh technically is the fact that when you're outside you see things you see nature in its true color its true light and that is so important to imprint that in your brain and you you can you just learn to see the the depth. I mean, when you compare, when you compare taking a photo on your on your iPhone or Android, and and even on a, a good digital camera, you know, you you look and you see, oh, I don't I don't see what I see when I'm out here, and I think that's that's the crux of the whole deal. And once you once you start seeing things out there in real life, you you can take that back to the studio. And even though, I mean, I, I paint pretty much every day and I go out several times a week to do plein air work, but I, even, even if I don't, and I pick up a photo that I have taken, it may not be the best photo, but I've been out there and I know in my mind what I, what I saw. And so therefore I can, I can, I can transport that then onto paper in the studio or canvas, whatever because I've got that sense, you know, and I think, um, and, and then you can, you can also, because once you understand the, the, the colors that are out there, the actual colors, then you can use, you know, intuitive colors in your studio and make really interesting work. Well, that's, the, that's kind of the basis of, you know, that's why I think plein air is so important. Leanne, so, is that you? Yeah. Do um, 
most of your plein air paintings, are they like studies for more work in the studio? Are they standalone? How do you use them? That They're time? both. They're okay. both. So what I like, what I like to do, if I have all the time in the world, you know, and this is not talking competition plein air, which I think is competition plein air is a different cap because you're you're you know you're working on something you've got a certain amount of time to get it done and you know you're looking for that freshness and that's and I think the people that buy those works that's what they're looking for they're they're maybe not totally completed pieces you know they're they're always ones they're always ones that maybe could be expanded upon when you get back in the studio and and I've done that numerous times, you know, and you know once we're in into the the mentorship, there's there's a remind me, Leanne, and there and there's a couple of examples that I'll I'll show you how I changed something because you know what I saw was one thing, and then when I got when I got that painting back from the competition, it was like I can make that better. Mm. So you know. And and I do. I'll tell you what I do. I do a lot of the um, the the um, challenges, the plein air challenges. So right now, the Strata Easel has one going on for the month of September. I think Jean's doing that. I am too. And um, they do one in January also. And so I think that that's a, an, an incredibly good thing to do. Those those challenges, especially like the January one, because you know January can just drag on. I mean. I'm not as I'm not as cold as you guys are up north, but I'll tell you what, it it you know the winters are January is a long month, <laughs> and and there's a there's a Strata Isla and I go out every day and paint, you know, and I might do what um what I told Jean the other night I do vehicular plein air, that means I'm sitting in my car because my gouache is going to freeze <laughs> if I go outside, <laughs> but um. So I do, I do a combination of studies when I'm out uh, I'm out in the field, but it's important for me to to do work that can really be studio either either finished in the studio or finished in the field um, that that I can put in the frame and and send to a gallery. Mm -hmm. So it's both, but but I think for um, you know to really embrace the the plein air. Um, aspect of art is to get out and do studies and, and, you know, and, and go back and do the same, the, the same landscape time after time. I mean, there's, I, I do the same studies sometimes 10 or 20 times hmm. and, and, you know, work off of those in different, different um, sizes and things like that. So. What are some things that you always like to change in your studies? Or like, are there things that you try to elevate? Because I mean, we sometimes you look at nature and it can look a little dull and dreary. And so you have, as an artist, you have to use your imagination. So that's using that intuitive color, I think. You know, by for instance, you know, you've got a you've got a gray day out there and things are pretty, pretty flat. And you know, if you take a photo of it, it almost looks like a black and white photo. Mm -hmm. And so, what do you what do you do to make that look? like an interesting painting. And so you've, you've got to add some intuitive color into that. Um, so it's, you know, using changing values and, and you know, taint colors. Um, you can do, you know, tonal. I love doing tonal work, you know, where things are all shades of, you know, one, one color. I mean, not all color, not everything, but the majority is, is one color. Which which happens? That's that's winter painting. Mm. Yeah. Did, did I answer your question? Did any, did that answer the name? So one of the things that there's a couple words that you used the other day when you were talking to me, and um, that that plein air gave you this, and one was the word fresh look, and the other was notice i notice things that i don't so do you want to talk a little bit about those two because they're a deeper layer of what you are seeing so you said what was the last what was the last um word so the first one was fresh look fresh and look the, and the second one was notice you were using the example where you're driving along the road and you said you oh. know we are a hazard to the world 
a plein air artist because we drive along the road and we stop like this and we look out or we slow down too much because of right. what we are noticing. So can you talk about those two things that what they do for your for your art practice? So I think when you, when you go outside and you're out there looking at nature, you're seeing you're seeing color and value like I said, that you don't see in photographs. So with, with plein air and because you're, because you're working sort of quickly, actually, you know, especially if you're doing studies, you know, you're trying to capture value and, and some color in, in a short time. And, you know, one of the big challenges with, with plein air is getting out and, you know, you've got shadows and, you know, depending on what the terrain is, your shadows can be changing. I mean, literally every three to five minutes. And so that's why it's important to do studies and do value studies and then use those as your roadmap for your for your main event, <laughs> your main painting. Um, so that and and if you if you get those colors in and it doesn't it isn't necessarily detail you know it's simplifying things so i think that's what fresh that's what's fresh about plein air and i think that's the attraction that a lot of people have to plein air work is that it does have a kind of a fresh view to it you know it, it's 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 there's a freshness to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i do a, i do a little retreat that um for a, for a gallery and, and it's an invitational for some there's like six of us that get together and paint and it's like we I call it fresh fresh paint fresh air and it's you know it's that's what it is it's being out there in that in in the fresh air and 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 giving a fresh look to those to those scenes with you know as as few of as as little a detail as possible yet but giving the sense of what you're trying to to show but the other word that you were talking about, you know, you're out there and you're noticing things, right? And I think when you, I, I mean, I I know that that I look at things totally different now that I that I go outside and paint. I mean, I look and I see things that that I don't think that you normally do. And colors, I think you don't real that the, the average person doesn't realize that there's colors. I, a long time ago, I was I was uh, driving in Eastern Washington with my husband and that's that's big farm country. And you know these it was in the fall and and they had harvested the fields and then they had tilled them. And so there were these beautiful brown colors that were in these fields and they were, but there but it wasn't just brown. I mean, it, there was purples in there. and and I said to him, I said, look at those different colors. Do you see those? And he goes, that's a brown field. I said, no. I said, stop and look at it. Look. And I said, you can start to see. And, you know, and, and so he started doing that and he would say, oh man, look at the color in this, you know? And so once you, once you start looking, really, really looking, then you get to, to see color. And like, like Jean said, yeah, I think artists, uh, planner artists are a little bit of a hazard. You know, we should have these signs like the the slow moving vehicle signs, you know, that, that have something like artist on board approach with caution or something like that. Because we should have a school uh, bus stop thing going. Yeah. <laughs> no, really do, you do, do you do any like color notes then or like sketches when you're out in plain air to ca capture kind of the essence of things, knowing yes. you're going to get back to studio? Yes. So I, I do, I have a, I have a, a, a regimen that I do. I, I do a compositional line study and I do those if I've got all the time in the world and I'm not, you know, worried about um, how long it's going to take me, I will do maybe 10 of those in different shapes um, and different, you know, like a one to two ratio or a three to four ratio, like a nine by 12, I do some verticals and then use that the area that I'm that I'm interested in painting, I will decide then by doing all those which one would be the best presentation for a painting, and then and then take that and then turn it into maybe if it's a it's a if it's very complex then I would do a notan which is just a black and white, just to to, to define shapes, and then and then if it, you know if it's not too complex I would just do like a three or four value study of that. And of the, the scene that I've chosen based on my composition study, and then um, and then go into into color. 
we, from what I'm seeing. And and if you know, and if it's if it's a if it's a, a area that's that's got a lot of um, shadows changing, then I will work only from that from that um, value study that I've done, because that I've got to stay true to that in order to not get the, the viewer confused by putting shadows and then chasing a shadow to another area and then you end up with a big mess. <laughs> right. Okay, Anae has to go to another meeting, so thanks for popping by. We'll keep thank going. You. If you want to pop in later, we'll still be here. So Sounds thank good. you for coming. All, All the best. best. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Take care. And something that you mentioned the other day, um, and I think you're saying it now, is that because you talked about that example um, a long time ago when you didn't take the time to do your line drawing and you didn't take the time to do that quick value study, um, your painting never worked and it was a good lesson and you've kept that painting. And I think new plein air painters really need to hear that because you get out there and you're wondering whether the practices that you built in the studio go out into the world to do it as well. Yeah, you know, I was up in, in Glacier Park and I had I had painted, um, you know, in the morning I'd gone out early and I'd painted a, a successful painting because I did my preliminary studies. I did a little sketch and then I did the did the value study and worked from that. And and so then in the afternoon I was driving along Lake McDonald and there was a great pullout and and a nice view that I thought, oh, this would be a great vertical piece. And I'll tell you, I, I fought that painting, you know, for three hours. And, and that's, that's too long. <laughs> and, and it just, and, and then I took it to the studio and I thought, well, I can't, it was, I was there for, for the glacier plein air. And I thought, well, I can't use this for my comp, any competition because I'm going to work on it in the studio. And it, it just never worked. It just never worked. It never amounted to anything because I didn't do my preliminaries. Yeah. And I, and if I had of, and, and so then the, the next part of the story, which I don't think you know, Jean, is I went back two years later last year and I painted the same thing, and but I did do my studies. Ah. You know what? And it it, it, it sold. It sold the day of the opening. Fantastic. <laughs> and it was Fantastic. You no, know, that was decent, you know. Well, you know, I was not, I wanted to mention just because with Leanne and uh, Leanne is a very, is a beautiful detailed artist and. Very and detailed. <laughs> Beautifully deep, like beautiful though. Like your work is so good, mm -hmm. and but but you always talk about wanting it to get simpler and and freer. And what Bonnie has mentioned right from the beginning is that there is that in in being out there doing plein air because you have no choice because there's a time restriction in that in that play that you don't mm -hmm. have six hours. I, I mean, I have my first plein air story, and it was six hours, and that's not going to work. <laughs> It's not a normal painting. <laughs> my first plein air story, I forgot my brushes at home. I drove to a location that I had scouted out beforehand. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, yeah I know. We all I have know. those stories. Part of the journey. Um, now, we were talking about that with plein air, and you've mentioned some of those, Bonnie. You've, you've talked about, you know, I do lots of studies out there. I will finish a painting out there, or I'll do a partial and I'll bring it in. And then there's also the Al Prima where you're doing, you know, it's that one layer and it's heavy paint and, and whatever. So maybe this is a good time to talk about because the other part of what you do is competitions. And to be successful at that, you have to be very prepared and very quick at what you're doing. So you want to talk through that process. I mean, when I look at the notes of what we got for the other day, you went through it a couple of times and it's, it's fascinating to see how you can successfully and land she can successfully complete in an hour a plein air painting for a competition. So I'm just saying that's, that's the crazy. It's crazy. Know. It's crazy. So we know we are not going to start there, but just kind of tell us, take us down that path. What have you learned? And well, I think you know it. It's all about preparing. You know, so. But for, you know, first of all, Jean, I, I want, I want, and Leanne, I, I want, I want to preface this whole thing with is the fact that, you know, what I want to mentor on is not necessarily just plein air, just be, because I want to turn oh. you into a plein air painter. No, no, no. It's, it's really good. It's really good practice to make better studio work. I know that I am a better studio painter because I do plein air. 
Are you making it our homework to do plein air? <laughs> plein air scares yeah. me. I can do that. And, oh no, and, no, I think, no, no, no. <laughs> just yeah, saying. I, mean, I think that's I think that's a good that could be a fun thing to do. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jane. I didn't mean to give her ideas. I was just asking. Oh, I think it's Leanne, you are here for re okay. So just this is an aside. You know how you always go, oh, this is an aside. Leanne is one of the people who went through all of the masters inside of uh, Masterius and you are at the top of the list. And so for Leanne, and there's a reason that you're there for Leanne and she's just figuring it out. That's because I love your art, but so, uh, you know, plein air but scares I'll, me. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Leanne, um, anybody that's listening, you know, when I, when I first learned to draw and to paint, I was trying to do everything exactly what I was seeing. And, and my mom was a realist, you know, she was an illustrator. And, you know, so if you didn't have everything exactly right on the horse you were painting, I, I was told about it, you know, and it was kindly, but, it, but she said, you know, that's not how that horse's leg looks, mm -hmm. you know, but now I know that I can paint a cow based on a shape of a rectangle box. I can make a cow out of that, you know, because it's, it's all about not painting every little detail, but to, you know, really let the, let the viewer finish some of that painting, you know, and if you put a shape out there, that's the right shape, they're going to know that it's a cow as opposed to a buffalo or something, you know, another animal, you know, it's, it's all about the shapes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I, and I still sometimes can get bogged down with, with detail and and try to get too too detailed and too realistic because I I strive to paint impressionistically, mm -hmm. you know. So that's I think that that's always an issue, especially when we're trying to copy things from photos. You know, you want to make it look like the photo, but it's it's really putting your your artistic spin on it, and I think that by doing things like those like the line drawings and the especially value studies those are those are big things that really help you with that but then jean to go on to what you were asking my my pre preparation i i try to be as prepared as i can be and so i i have a checklist of things that i need to pack when i when i go out and sometimes i go out for you know 12 weeks. And so I need to know what my what my workload is going to be and I have to have supplies en enough to carry that through because there's places that I go that I can't get that that have no they don't even know what an art store is because there's you know they're lucky to have a grocery store. So um it, it's all about preparation. So I have my little checklist and I have I have containers that I put things in, you know, I have one for pastels and I pack a lot of, I pack a lot of pastels with me, but when I go out to actually paint, I like to segregate those into, you know, the values and the colors that I want to use. And, you know, so you're not packing, pastels are heavy, you know, so, you know, if I, if I can tone it down to, you know, a small little pashad of, 30 colors or, you know, even or maybe, maybe even 60 colors that are broken, you know, like half sticks or something. If I'm doing pastels, then that that's good enough for me, you know? And, and I think, you know, for instance, like yesterday I went out and, and um, worked on a painting and this morning as well, that painting I did this morning, I took, I just, um, bought a box of Sennelier pastels from a friend of mine who wasn't going to be using them. And I don't, I don't remember what, what, uh, what the name of this, the pastel set was, but it, it had, you know, it's, it was an 80 set half sticks and, and there's, there was a good range of colors, but I, when I was looking at it, I thought, you know, there's not, there's not really a lot of huge variation in values in this set. But that painting that I did, and, and I was kind of wishing I had it, but actually the painting that I did, that I think Jean saw this, mo this morning, um, I used only those those colors and it really worked. It, it has a little bit of a tonal 
um, feel to it because there's not a lot, there's not a big value range to it. You know, so you just want to have the, the, the pastels or the oils. And of course with oils, you know, if you have blue, uh, blue, yellow, red, and white, you, that, that's really all you need to go out and do a study, right? Because you can mix every color. There's a limited palette, whether it's yeah. pastels or oil or acrylic, is, is really what you're saying is, is one of the things. Because that also simplifies your choices out there in terms of how you're using your paints. And yeah, so I, I get a, that. Yeah, and that's exactly that's exactly what I found. And, and you know, so then, and, and you have, you, you know, you have your basics. So you got your paper or your canvas and, and if, you know, got your, got your little easel and, you know, whatever your comforts are, that, that's, keep it, keep it simple when you go out there, just keep it simple. Um, you were talking to me the other day about three words came to mind when you were describing both when you're in competition or when you're going out into uh, plein air just on your own and the three things that you were said so maybe you can talk a little bit about those some of it you've already talked about which is supplies the other one is to be it was about being ready for the elements and the third one was about comfort so if you want to talk about those three and how they because because you know good example of supplies um, is equipment supplies as well and you talked about you can put your easel up in two minutes and and we were talking i said when i was i was down just down painting in in mexico and it was taking me 30 minutes to put my easel up because i didn't know what i was doing with it and I couldn't get it to work and by then you're like 30 minutes out in the heat and you're like whatever so yeah if oh. you could talk about those three areas that would be great yeah so so as far as equipment goes you know and supplies if if i'm going to go out and paint um and especially I mean, okay, I'll, I, I'm going to preface this with, I like to paint out the back of my vehicle. You know, it, it's it's handy and it's really comfortable. And and it's a hatchback, you know, it's a Highlander. So I've got some some cover and, and I've got all my supplies, you know, so I've got all my comfort, my comfort zone is taken care of. But when you're going to go out and, and paint away from your vehicle, you, you'd have to have a way to transport things. So I, I tried to find things that are, that I can fit in like a backpack and there's backpacks that you can get that are, you know, you can wheel them. They've, they've got little wheels on them or you can put them on your back, either one. But the idea is, is to, you know, I'm going to take a, you know, probably a nine by 12 and eight by 10 canvas or paper. And if it's paper, I mount those on uh, foam core beforehand. So that means I don't have to carry an extra board with me to, to put the paper on. And, um, and then, you know, like I said, a small selection of pastels. And, and when I say small, that's, you know, 80 sticks or less or, you know, and, and you know, broken down into little, little, you know, the little sticks are only, you know, maybe an inch long. And um, and then your your easel, my my thought was, is I want something that I literally can put up in just a just a few minutes. And so I did, I did research and, you know, the easel that I use is the, the one that Prolific Painter makes it. And I, and I have the original one, you know, I think they call them day trippers now. Um, but it, it's got, it's got a, it's very easy to set up, you know, the, the tripod's easy. The, the little connection to the um, easel is, is simple and it goes up easy. And it's, and what I like about it is that it, it, stands up well when there's wind because you don't want something that you've got to hold up your easel when it's a, a slight breeze and with the risk of it falling over or you know blowing over so those are those are things that are that are imp important as far as supplies and then as far as the elements go you want to be prepared for for that and i by that i mean you know if you're if you're going to be out there in the sun you have your sunscreen, have, you know, make sure you got a hat that's going to cover you and protect you and, and maybe long sleeve shirts and, and, or, or, or at least good sunscreen um, and bug spray, you know, yeah, I just was telling Jean, I, we, this morning when I was out, the, these little tiny wasps were like hovering around and, and they bite and, <laughs> and I, and I had, 
I had some bug spray with me and I, I used it, but they it, they seem to be resilient to that. But anyway, you know, it's still it's still important to have those things that are going to take care of the the elements. And you know, some people will like to use like an umbrella um, to be out and painting. I I try to to find natural shade to protect myself, and and so that I'm painting, I've got my my easel and my palette and everything within you know the shaded area. Well, even though I'm looking out into maybe a brighter a brighter area. Um, awesome. And awesome. What, what, what else, Jean? I think that was, did I answer? Yeah. I think, you know, we're going to kind of shift out of the uh, conversation around plein air uh, because, and, and Leanne has just led us into the next stage of the, because we only have about 10 more minutes. So um, we want to talk a little bit before we sign off around mentorship and what this looks like, because this is just one element. This is a passion that you have. Um, and so one of the questions that Leanne had is, uh, Bonnie, do your lessons translate easily to acrylic if somebody wants to join the group that um, does acrylic? I, I think I think so. Um, the only thing that, you know, regardless of what medium you use, I think, you know, the rules are kind of the same. I mean, I paint in in I do gouache I do gouache studies a lot and I've painted in watercolor and oil and I do oil and cold wax as well as pastel and I think it's it's knowing your medium and how it works um, I'm I'm personally not as familiar with acrylic even though I'm just starting some acrylic um, pieces that I'm going to be uh, doing kind of they're, they're going to be a little abstracty things but um i think you can i mean as far as mentoring somebody i mean what i guess it depends on what you're looking for in in, in what what you want is in, in your mentoring is um you know is, is it is it about the the medium and learning the medium i i'm probably not the best person to teach you something about acrylics as i am with the other mediums but i certainly can help anybody with, um, you know, the fin the working through the finished product and and the you know the the whole the elements that we talked about as far as design and composition and color and you know those basic things which I believe trans translate well to any medium. And I think I think those those rules are kind of the same. I, I mean, I'm I'm very willing to hear what what your thoughts are, Leanne. I'm going to use oils in your class. I just thought for anybody watching that might want to join your group, if they're an acrylic painter and they love your art, um, if they would feel comfortable in the group. I think so. Yeah. I, th I think that, you know, I think that the, you know, the basics are, are, are there. And I, I paint with a good friend of mine um, is an acrylic painter and she paints plein, plein air as well as studio. And, you know, we go out a lot and, and, and and we you know we critique each other's work and and I think that um, I think it can translate the, the the mentorship that I'll do is is you know hopefully I mean it's got to be what you guys want what 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 you're looking for and all I can promise you is that I'm I'm a I'm a great cheerleader I'm a great coach and I mean I I try to be a great coach and I'm a good cheerleader but um, <laughs> I I want to see people succeed. And um, I frankly, I frankly would like you to be more successful than I am. I mean, that's that's kind of how I approach it. I have a couple of people that I mentor locally on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and you know, I've got a. There's one gal that she 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 has she's been rocking the local art markets, you know, with with what she's doing, and her work is nothing like what I do. But but we have but there's a commonality with with technique and use of equipment and product. And I think that's how, that's how it can equate to any, basically any medium. Mm -hmm. And the elements around composition and what you're seeing. And it, so just a, a, a little expansion on that. So part of what happens when we meet with Bonnie is we will be bringing homework and Leanne knows this from working with other mentors where we'll have a conversation with the mentor one-on-one -on -one in that first hour to really go from you know what's going on with that piece of art and a lot of it has to do with 
um, design and composition, right? And, and it's a place for us to ask lots of questions to our mentor as well and continue to pick their brain. And uh, we had had this conversation the other day, Bonnie, and, and one of the things that came out when I asked you about mentorship, and you said a lot of things, but one thing you said, you know, you're very open to, because this is what art is, try it, right? See if it works, experiment. And so it's not that there's any prescribed approach, but it's this thing of trying it and exper experimentation and and encouragement. So that to me really reinforces what you've just been saying to Leanne around that that's, you know, you're the cheerleader because you're just, you're saying, okay, why not? Let's try this and just see. And, and uh, that's the journey that we learn from you, but we also learn from each other when we're trying things. So mm -hmm. I, think it's yeah, I, I think that that, that, that's so true. And, you know, I, I have been involved with uh, taking workshops on online workshops from uh, an artist in the States by the name of Scott Christensen. And Leanne, look at, look up his work. Um, I think I'm a, I've I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, pardon me. I said, I think I have, I have before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so he's, you know, he, he actually was the guy that got me in, enthused about going out and, you know, painting a, like a small study. And then maybe paint it again and again and again and just do it, you know, in different different formats and you know, and then working from small to large, you know, mid-size and then even bigger. And I'm not a huge paint. I mean, he paints big, but um th th that's that that's so important. And I think, and he's and he was the one that said, you know what, it doesn't matter if something doesn't work, but you gotta try it. And he said, you know, and he'll say, Well, I, I'm gonna try something. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, you know? And so what? that's okay. It's okay. It's paint and it's paper or paint and a canvas, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I'm, and I'm not being frivolous and, you know, cavalier about wasting supplies, but it's, it's true, you know? I mean, it, art is a continual learning experience. And, you know, and somebody, and somebody oh, a couple of years ago had said to me, um, well, why would you take a workshop from so-and-so? And I said, why wouldn't I? And the guy was saying, like, well, you don't need you don't need a workshop. Well, yeah, I do. Everybody needs a workshop, you know. You got to keep learning, or you're gonna, you know, you're just gonna be stagnant. And with mentors, I I mean with mentoring, I just think it's it's as good for me as it is for, for you. And I think it's 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 a learning process. And you know, if I can be successful in helping my people that I'm mentoring grow their art and, and have a, just have some aha moments. That's great. You know, I mean, you, you, we've all taken workshops that, you know, maybe weren't the best workshops. Right. And, but, I, but I will challenge you to say that I bet you learned something, even though it maybe wasn't a great workshop, but I bet you learned something from it. And I think that that's, that's just that whole thing about, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep learning. So before we, you know, kind of just do the wrap up thing, Leanne, is there something you're thinking about that you want to ask um, that you haven't haven't put out there yet? No, I don't. <laughs> I'll think of it after we uh, close our group <laughs> or close this conversation. But no, um, I'm sure I'll have lots of questions in our group, Bonnie. I can't tend to be a chatterbox. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great because I, I want you. I want my people that I'm mentoring to know that, you know, I will give you good critique. It'll be kind critique. I will tell you if I don't think something is right, but hopefully it's done in a kind way because I, I like to be kind to people. And um, I think, um, well, I guess that's, that's kind of the, the crux of it. You know, you, yeah, but we want you to be honest and not hold back uh, what we that's need what, to that's hear. What I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. what I, that's what I mean. You know, it's yeah. it's just like that. You can you can be you can have a critical eye and still be kind about it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, that's the one thing I have found with masters. They are phenomenal at this gift of sharing their knowledge and helping you advance. So we we are ready for what you have to tell us for sure. And I think that really looking forward to this journey. And uh, anyone who 
is watching this on YouTube or inside of Mastery Us, um, you know, you've got any further questions, especially if you're from the outside, www.masteryus.com is where you reach into. We kind of showed you the walkthrough. We're all people who participate inside of Mastery Us and we'd love to meet more and more artists to so come join us and uh, Bonnie, we are excited to start with you and we are gonna be starting the third Thursday of the month. And it is at six o'clock mountain time. And of course there's, you know, every other place has a different time, but just check your, what your own local time is in rel relative to that. And, and if you've been watching this, uh, thanks for tuning in and Bonnie, thanks for taking the time to do this for us and give us those tips on plein air. Cause I tell you, I'm in that strata challenge. So you're encouraging me. I'm going to keep going and you just keep the thing rocking and every so yeah, often. I, I think, I think uh, Jean, I think it's fair to say that this first um, mentoring session, I'm going to be as to the best of my knowledge, I'm going to be at a plein air event. Yeah. Um, and so I, I am, I am hoping that I have good connection. I'm hoping I have reasonable light and, uh, It'll be it'll be uh, a little bit of a challenge, but you know what? I'll be there and uh, available to answer anything that that you all bring to me. So it's you know what what's important about this is that you guys bring to me what you want to know. And and don't worry, I can, we, will I can do, help. <laughs> we will do that. Help we will help you. people to our group. But quite we, often we quite often we don't know what we don't know. So. Um, You'll help us with that too. I'm really excited about it. Good. I'm excited too. You're my first group. Fantastic. You're my you're my guinea pigs. You know. Well, we'll. we'll Are we happy, happy to be? be? Guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> this is our place of learning, so we're we're so glad to to go down that journey with you. And so we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for coming, Leanne. And we're going to tune out now, so I'll be the last one to leave. So I'm going to say goodbye to you all. Take Thank care. you, Bonnie. Bye. Thank you, Jean. Bye-bye.